Good evening. I hope everybody's had a wonderful Easter weekend and uh, and past couple of days has been great, beautiful weather and everything. And uh, and God is just so good to us. Uh, I do know um, uh, I've seen in the past couple of days of some uh, people that has uh, went to be with the Lord. I know that in a lot of aspects, our hearts are broken. But then on the other side, we should be rejoicing because sort of like Isaiah says that uh, we don't consider what they're spared from. And, uh, and they won. Uh, they crossed over when they took their last breath here. They entered into the presence of uh, Jesus Christ and Father God for eternity. And never, ever again will they face sickness, hardships, heartaches, or anything like it. Our prayers are for the families that have lost loved ones. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, they some that's uh, young people as well. And so we just keep them in prayer. And uh, if you're on Facebook, you probably, a lot of people that uh, are on my face page probably have seen some that has passed away and do keep them in prayer. Um, tonight, we're, we're taking a little uh, detour. Um, I've pondered about what to, to teach on. And uh, God asked me, as I was getting ready to prepare last night for this evening, he said, what is, what is most important? And that is what the title of this uh, teaching is. What is most important? If I was to ask you what is most important in life, what would your answer be? Would it be having faith in God? Would it be operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Would it be love? Or what would it be? So if you've got your Bible, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And uh, uh, this chapter, uh, just you read the whole thing. I'm just going to give you uh, bits and pieces of it, but you read the whole thing and you'll get a clear understanding about it. Now, I want to read the very last verse of chapter 13, 1 Corinthians. And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now, the word charity there is means to give love. You know, uh, that's what we're to do. It, it, when we celebrated Easter or Resurrection Sunday, uh, this past Sunday, uh, God was expressing his love for humanity through what Jesus did, the selflessness, the sacrifice. Even Jesus, when he's on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And they didn't. But it had to be done. And that is the greatest love. Love is the one thing that will never end. While everything else will, there'll, there'll come a time when prophecy or prophetic speaking or teaching is going to end. There's going to come a time when uh, healing will end. Nobody will ever need a healing again. There'll come a time when there won't be no needs of miracles. They'll end. There will come a time when tongues and interpretation of tongues won't be necessary. 
will all speak the same dialect, have the same understanding. But the one thing that will be needed from this moment throughout eternity is love. Uh, you know, God's love is agape, A-G-A-P-E. It is unconditional love. Uh, John said, uh, God loved us first uh, because we, unless we understand the Word of God, we really don't have an understanding of what love is. And that's the problem we have with people uh, today is they fall prey to the devil and he will pit one person against another person. You look at all the different denominations, and they all got the same Bible. Let's just say uh, the majority of the churches used to, the only flavor was uh, the King James, and of course now you have the new King James, you have the NIV, the NLT, the uh, NSAB, and uh, uh I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And like denominations, why is there so many different denominations if we're all reading from the same Bible? We all should have the love of God in us. Love covers multitude of sins. Love will reach down and help somebody that's down instead of kicking them while they're down. We're, we're not trying to enable somebody, but we will help somebody to get on their feet because we all need some encouragement every once in a while. It made me think of that old of a song that uh, was probably played when I was just... Uh, a young kid, and I don't remember whether it's Barbara Streisand or who it was that sung. I, I know it's a a lady singer, and uh, it was what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's too little of. Well, that's more so true today than it's ever been. Because when you look around and you see um, people don't understand what true love is. Uh, you know, true love doesn't just say, well, I love you, but, but true love will speak truth even when it hurts. True love will never fail. True love knows how to speak and knows also when not to speak. Uh, I have watched over the years people say how they love God, yet they can't love people. There's something wrong because if you love God, then God shows you how to love people. Before I turned to the Lord Jesus Christ, I was a husband, I was a daddy, but I did not know the love of God. And after I've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is still working on me uh, to, to be the husband my wife needs, the, the uh, father that my children needs, the grand parent that my grandchildren need and showing them the love of God and showing how to put God first. I have watched divorces take place when both people say they love God then if both people love God how can they and they they took vows they took an oath for better, for worse, rich or poor, in sickness and health, till death do you part. And and I remember when Pastor Jerry Fouch was here, 
uh, uh, before I start pastoring. One thing that Pastor Fouch taught me was that him and his wife, at that time, uh, she was uh, she was just super, super sweet lady. And he said the one word that was not in their vocabulary to be spoken was divorce. He says, if we have problems, we work through them. Well, that's true. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm talking to Christians uh, more so than lost people. Uh, sinners, you know, sinners nowadays, they think, well, we can live together for five, 10, 20 years, and then if we finally decide we love each other enough, we'll just get married. But that's not the way God ordained everything. That's not the way he constructed everything. He wants the people to get married, then have the relationship. Oh, date, yes, but not the, uh, the way this world is now. Everything uh, has to be sexualized, and by doing that, then uh, the agape love is uh, not there. It is the erotic type love, and and so when something difficult comes up in the couple's life, they can't deal with it, and instead of working through it, it's just easier to get a divorce. I haven't looked in the last few years, but I know several years ago that the divorce rate in 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 churches was over fifty percent. There's something wrong. It was then, it is now. And and I mean that's why if you've got one person that's a Christian, you got one person that's a sinner. Uh, then more than likely they're going to have problems because uh, that's why Paul said, don't be unevenly yoked. You know, uh, if you're Christian, stay with the Christians. If you're a sinner, you know, you're going to be a sinner. And, uh, uh, and, you know, it brings a lot of unnecessary heartbreaks and headaches and everything. I look and I and I wonder, and I mean, in our area, it's not like it is in the big cities where you have uh, the places where there isn't the majority of the household is one parent, and it's usually the the wolf, the mother that's having to take care of the children. The father is either. Uh, doing drugs or in prison or shacked up somewhere else and so the children are raised up not knowing what a father is supposed to be because mother cannot fulfill both parts god never intended a mother to be both father and mother the father needs to pick up uh their responsibility uh, you know, when I do a wedding, and especially uh, whenever I get ready to do the vows with the ring, and I'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I'll start with verse 4, charity uh, suffereth long and is kind, uh, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth itself uh, not itself, it is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Verse 8, charity never faileth. And there again, the word charity means to give love, to give love. You remember what Paul said, whatsoever man soweth, so shall he reap. If we sow love, we're going to reap love. 
and uh, uh, that's why when I have the bride and the groom to look at their wedding bands, the wedding bands is circular. You won't see a scene unless it's some fancy uh, designer type wedding band. The typical wedding band is just going to be a smooth, either white gold or or yellow gold, and it'd be just never ending. No matter which way, which direction you turn it, there's no beginning and there's no end with it. And that's the way love is. Love never ends. When God the Father sent Jesus to earth, it was not a one-way ticket, but it's a round trip. Jesus came and showed his love for people who abused him, who used him, who cursed him, and yes, who even killed him. But the grave, you know, uh, in the love in him was so much greater than the sin that he rose from the grave. He spent another 40 days revealing himself to over 500 people and then ascended up into heaven as the disciples and probably uh, part of the 120 that was in the upper room, and uh, which waited another 10 days for Pentecost and when God sent the Holy Spirit to fill his people. And yet, Jesus is getting ready to come back again. And he's coming back for his people. Well, who is his people? You know, we don't know what love is till we know God. And we get in God's word. Um, when a man knows God, then he will know how to love his family. He'll know how to love his wife, his children, his grandchildren. He'll know how to uh, have his priorities in order. Uh, he will teach his family how to put God first. Uh, there is an going to be a question are are we are we going to go to church it is we're going to church and of course if somebody's sick in the family it's understandable one of the parents stays with the child that child or if there's multiple children but the father knows the importance of hearing that word that builds faith, that builds character. And that's why the man has been given instructions by God to be the leader of the house. Now, I didn't say Lord, but leader. And if he is a leader that follows after God's steps, he'll never have to worry about his wife or his children because they will know that he is looking at their best interest through God himself. He'll know uh, that man that loves God. Then the love of God will show through his actions of how he raises his family to know Jesus Christ. That, my friend, is the love of God that can change the world. Um, there's entirely too many one-parent families with no godly man there to be an example and be a leader for their children and wife. More often than not, it's the mother that's having to pick up the slack that's having to try and do everything. And if the man isn't there or the man's not supportive, then that woman, sooner or later, will exhaust herself and get discouraged and quit. Quit church. 
because the man's failed to do what he's called to do. The man's supposed to be the leader. The man's supposed to say, hey, let's get up and go. Let's go to church. Let, come on, we're going to go hear the word of God. The man ought to be the one to say, hey, we got a problem. Let's pray about it. The man ought to be the one if somebody sit, it, one of them sit, lay hands on them and anoint and pray for them. The man is supposed to be the example, the leader in the house. And yet so few men take their godly responsibility seriously. And uh, if men of God that love God would do God's will, God's way, Divorces would become obsolete in the Christian community. That's just said and done. Yet, instead of men following God, they follow their wants and desires instead of the will of God. Uh, I look back... Uh, my family didn't always go to church. When my parents turned to the Lord, I was in between, I think about 12 year old when they turned to the Lord. And my dad, he got in the word and he learned the word and, you know, and I believe that God had a calling for him to be a minister. Uh, he very knowledgeable. He could teach uh, and minister and everything. Yet, uh, with that said, um, Dad stayed faithful to the Lord. Uh, my mom separated and went her way, and and uh, Dad he went his way, but he stayed faithful to the Lord. Stayed in the house of God all he could. And he's going to be with the Lord uh, a little over two years uh, this past November since he went to be with the Lord. And uh, one thing that he always would do was as when we were as a family in the house, as I was a child and we'd go to church, uh, he would visit, uh, you know, uh, he would stick with the pastor. He uh, asked questions, and I would go along with him. And uh, Reverend Jesse Bemis was our pastor, and I think uh, Reverend Bemis lives down in Texas now. Some of his family is, I think, still up here. A wonderful man of God. I'll never forget him. And, I uh, remember him and his wife, and they had uh, what, a little chihuahua uh, at their house and everything. And But uh, Reverend Bemis taught Dad to love. Love people, whether if they were the drug addicts or alcoholics, love them to life. Help them to get to know Jesus. And and you got to be there for your family as well. And that's why I said there, the problem is today men follow their wants instead of God's wants. And uh, uh, there's three types of wills that I'm going to give you right now. There's God's perfect will, and that's obeying God's word and living a blessed life regardless of whatever type of trials you go through. Or you will go through trials. You can you can love God and you will face trials. You sickness will attack your body and right on you name it and it'll happen. But you'll love God and God knows that you love him. He's gonna take care of you. That's what 
That's why Paul said today is the day of salvation. Salvation is whatever you have need of right at this very moment. If you need healing, that's part of salvation. If you need uh, financial help, that's part of salvation. If you need peace of mind, that's part of salvation. If you need deliverance, that's part of salvation. And uh, uh, then you've got God's permissive will. And this is the one that God just gives you the time uh, to change before there's consequences. You know, there's a lot of people. And uh, because they thought that God's permissive will was okay, when they stand before God, they'll lose a lot of their rewards that they could have had, should have had, but they failed to do God's perfect will. They'll get to heaven. And then you have the will that ends up that gets people killed. In other words, as Paul said, there is sin unto death. And we can, you know, we can, if you turn on the news or pick up the newspaper, how often have you picked up and seen where a drunk driver got killed or killed a bunch of people? How many times have you picked up and seen where somebody went in and started shooting and ended up getting shot and killed? See, those that's not God's perfect will. That's not even God's permissive will. That's when a person just totally gets out of all the will that ends up costing their life. And, uh, and that's why, as we read there, um, let me back up to verse 11. I'm going to read down through back through verse 13. Uh, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these three is charity or given love. And uh, let me see something. Amplified Bible. I'll do it real quick like First Corinthians chapter 13. The Amplified. Verse 13. And so faith, hope, Love abiding, or abide, faith, conviction, and belief, respect in man's relation to God and divine things, hope, joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation, love, true affection for God and man, Growing out of God's love for and in us, these three, but the greatest of these is love. And that's why I've watched, I've watched some of King and Country uh, gospel singers, uh, and uh, I've seen some of their concert or when they was in concert on YouTube and one thing that these uh, young men bring in is that they speak to the the young ladies that are there they speak to the young men that are there they speak about how the young men should treat a young lady and to show honor and respect 
And, you know, if you love God, you're going to respect your spouse. You're going to respect. You don't have to try to force respect. You gain respect because of your love of God. You do what is right. Is anybody perfect? No. But that's not no excuse for not trying to do what is right in the sight of God. Love is unconditional. Today, people put love on a condition. And I understand that if, if, uh, if a woman's in an abusive relationship, I wouldn't stay in it. I wouldn't advise her to stay in it. Because sooner or later, it can turn out fatal for somebody. That's why women, as Christian, should look for a Christian man that loves God. Not one that just talks about God, but one that walks the talk. And uh, uh, so I don't know, you know, I, I don't know why God had me give this and because probably I don't know how many men are watching this. I don't know how many women are watching this. A lot of times it'll just show a few that's either made a message or uh, click like or something to that nature. But uh, for those that's hearing this, Seek God and seek people that love God. Not just somebody says, oh, I love God. You do. Well, how do you, how, what, what, what is your reflection? I remember Kenneth Hagin saying one time uh, when we was out there to win a Bible seminar and uh, uh, somebody he said, somebody asked him one time, how do you know who is the most spiritual? And he said, well, you can't go by what, uh, how loud they shout in church or how often they speak in tongues or how often they roll in the floor. He said, but I can tell you how to really tell is you go spend a week or two with them in their house. See how they treat their spouse and their children. See what they do, what's on their agenda. Do they get in the Word? Do they pray together? Do they, do they talk about the Lord Jesus? Or do they have things that is more important? He said, then you'll find who the true Christian is. And there's been many of people that's had their hearts broke because people weren't walking in the love of God. And love is the only thing that will endure throughout eternity. Jesus showed it to us. God has showed it since the, the fall of Adam and Eve. So we know for almost 6,000 years, God has been trying to show his love to his people. And people fail to find the love of God. And I want the best for my family. I want the best for my wife. I want the best for my children. I want the best for my grandchildren. And hopefully I will, I'll see my great-grandchildren. I want the best for them. And if I have great-great-grandchildren, I want the best for them, and give an opportunity, I will talk to them about the love of God. Because if they know the love of God, they'll know how to live the right life. So, I'm going to stop here tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, I can't tell you exactly what we're going to be studying. I don't know if we'll be back in this, or if we'll go in a different direction. Uh, God's not told me that yet. 
I don't have uh, services lined up months in advance. Sometimes God has been known to change a message right before I get up to preach on Sunday mornings. And uh, I'd rather be obedient to the Lord than to miss the Lord, and it may miss the person that it was intended for. I know there's been a lot of times I've had messages, and, and I even knew who the messages were for. And it was, it was messages full of compassion and love, and yet they weren't there. Now this before I started doing Facebook, so at least now I can reach more people. And uh, I have, uh, and, and say this, I remember it's probably been 15, 15, 18 years ago. I had a call and uh, family from uh, California was moving into the area. And uh, he asked me a question. What was the most important thing? And I'm trying to think in my mind, now, what, what is he getting at? What, what is he talking about? And, uh, and of course, I said, well, following the Lord is, is most important. He said, love. Well, that's true. And if you love God, you'll follow God. There's, that, that's a given. But love is what brings people together. Love is what will build a family. Love is what will build a church family. Love will, is what will build a community. Love is what will build a nation. And there's too little of it now. People know phileo love, er, uh, eros, erotic, brotherly love, but agape love, that unconditional love, that's the one that people struggle with. So, as always, I hope that this is something that will help you, encourage you, uh, if you've uh, you know, I understand during these trying times of COVID and people are full of fear. Let me tell you something. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He did give us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind is knowing what you need to do. You know, if you're sick, well, then stay home. Call, we'll pray. We'll put you on prayer list. But if you're not sick, then assemble together. Come together as God puts the church together. So let's just pray. And of course, if there's some but one that's never accepted Jesus or someone that has uh, backslid on God, just ask God to forgive you right now. And let me tell you something else. There's a lot of people that won't go to church because they have watched people talk about God, but their life did not line up with God. They've heard about Jesus, but when they look at the people, they say, well, they don't go to church. Does church get you into heaven? Well, church is people to start with. But we are to not forsake the semblance of ourselves together. And if we love God, we'll understand that it is not a hardship, but it is something that we should desire to do. So, Father God, I just come to you right now. I know that, Lord God, this word is, <clears throat> is probably hard for some to swallow. But, Lord, you said the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And it's a process, Lord God. 
I pray for each one that is listening. I pray that, Lord, that if there be any that is lost or turn from you, that right now they just ask for all their sins be forgiven and that you'll just fill them with your precious Holy Spirit to live for you from this day on. And, Lord, help us to walk in the, your love, to share your love, and to show your love. And so, Lord, I pray a blessing upon each one that is watching. And, Lord, that you'll just use them in a great and mighty way to be an example of what it is to know the true love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, be with us. Lead us and guide us. And we never know. Today may be our last day, or it may be a hundred years from now, but that we walk in your love and be known by your love. And I ask this in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, don't forget to tell people I'll post this. I'll be posting this on YouTube. Also, remember tomorrow evening, 6.30, and Sunday mornings, we invite you to come and join us at 11 o'clock or just slightly after 11. Uh, we're, we get started a little bit late, typically, but uh, love to have you come and join us, be part of the family. And, uh, and in between now and then, may God richly bless you. Walk in the love of the Lord and just watch God do great things through you because of the love that is in you. And so, till later, shalom, God bless, and we'll see you then.